Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Let's dive back into the Iron Oak. Okay, now that we have the two base plates all plumbed out, all the layout's good to go, and then now that the hub for where the lens is attached to, that's all taken care of. Now it's time to finally get into the nitty gritty of this job, is building the trunk. Now bars of steel are usually linked together with um, very soft, bands of, of iron pretty much and uh, you know you can get in there with snips but I like to just take a chisel and pop those things loose just nice quick and easy unloading massive plates of steel is, is one thing it takes a lot of imagination a little bit of engineering to kind of be able to do such a thing but when it's just down to like bars 20 foot sticks makes it a lot easier a huge relief of this job is the fact that it, um, I don't have to outrun rust. As I'm working, I'm not trying to oil things, I'm not trying to cover them up. If it gets rained on, it's a problem. No, 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 not with this job. It's supposed to rust. We're looking for patina. Rust comes with a whole lot of different colors, you know, from deep burgundies, browns, and oranges. It's really a magnificent finish, and it actually seals the material itself. It becomes brown and bark-like. I'm so excited to create the illusion of a tree through just natural oxidation. I always love to use some of the old tools I made as like a child. Um, my old roller that back there, I've never had to rebuild it or build a new one because that one still works. I did a deep dive in a whole other video. Go check that out if you're curious about it. But yeah, I went into an old mechanic shop, got some gears and made it happen. When I'm working on material this thick, you know, four by three eighths, I can't just turn the wheel to make it happen. I actually have to grab what's called a snipe or like a cheater bar to really bend that stuff over because it's just, it's so hard. And you imagine a lever as pretty much just a larger wheel. Now for the next roller I'm gonna build, I'm gonna build an absolutely massive gear reduction so I can sit there with like a, a little wheel and it'll be bending massive bar, nice and slow and steady. I use my propane forge that I built years ago for a lot of things, but there's some things that it's limited to, like these, you know, 20 inch rings. I had to go to my coal forge, which I love to fire up as much as I possibly can, and uh, get those rolled in there, had a chain fall to support where they were, it all worked out just cherry. Now when you're forging big bar like that, I use a, I use a four pound hammer for the most part. And what's interesting about it is when I'm forging the, the rings over the horn of the anvil, you'd be shocked at how light I'm actually tapping. I'm, I'm, it might seem like I'm really giving it a lot of onion, but it's incredible how delicate this art form really is because you're just feathering this perfect, perfect circle because if you think about a circle, it's not so much just a 
edgeless shape, the shape of infinite edges. So as you're working your way down, you want as many points of contact as you possibly can. So it's not just burnt, burnt, bonk, you know? When you're coal forging, you're, you're sure it's more of a skill, but you have so much more control. You can do so much more with it. You can get the steel hotter, and you can put your heat exactly where you want it, as long as it could sit down onto a surface. So whenever I fire my coal forge up, it's a, it's a good day. So you might be asking yourself, why am I making these rings on the bottom? I was not intending to with my model. The rings are to add structural rigidity to the plates themselves. It might seem like a lot, you know, with, you know, three eighths, right? You don't, you couldn't imagine that bending, especially in a big hub formation. Well, when you have 5,000 pounds of tree, 12 feet up, that's a lot of lever on the, on the top side of that plate. So he built these rings and then welded them into place so that uh, it pretty much makes that 3 8 plate into four inches, if you get my meaning. Now, Alice is my 100-ton press I built a long time ago. I needed uh, something big that I can add texture to solid bar cold, but I couldn't afford a 100-ton press. You know, those things are big money. So I did the best thing I could and built one from Bottle Jacks. If you actually want a closer look at that wacky machine, I did another video on that. Go check it out. It's great. Working with Alice is both terrifying and joyful. So when you're holding this you know, heavy piece of bar in her jaws and you're, you're feeling the die slowly close around it, all of a sudden you feel this big whoo, all of a sudden it grips, you grab the hold of it. Then there's nothing you could do but just kind of be there for general support because she's gonna do her thing and all you gotta do is just sit back and watch. And what's cool about it is it's an easy way to create organic shapes on the hard way. This is the easy way, like if I was to bend it over my anvil right now, and then that's the hard way over my anvil. She's bending this the hard way, and it's just honestly a, a marvel that she's able to do it, and it's like, she doesn't even notice the steel is in there. And, uh, and it's just so much fun to create organic shapes because not one of these bars is like any other. Now, I don't know when the last time you looked at, I mean, really looked at oak bark before, but it's pretty much vertical lines that move in the direction of the grain of the wood. And they're separated with rectangular cross sections. And with Alice's dyes, they naturally are able to create that wonderful texture. When it comes to visualizing this piece, it's actually quite complex. Not so much in the terms of its shape, you know, it's three limbs and a trunk, but it's more than that. It is dozens and dozens, if not a hundred different bars that intersect at different places, that cooperate with each other, clash with each other, split away, then come back and move through each other. And you have to visualize about 80% of it. The rest is just fun, cake decorating. But I had to memorize pretty much what I had here to create it there. As you watch these videos, you might notice that me doing some goofy stuff or probably usually very sketchy stuff. That's because I'm alone in the shop. I don't have anybody to help me out uh, yet, which I hope is gonna change soon. Um, I don't know how I have enough space in here to have an apprentice or apprentices just yet. But I'm planning on you know, building a better shop next door, 
much bigger, much more space, so I can start doing classes, start training people, A, to spread the knowledge of this trade, which is deeply important to me, but also to have some help in the shop. So the reason that I waited to weld the rings into the center, you know, before I kind of mocking up the shape of the trunk, for very good reason, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of clearance. I didn't want to weld those tree rings in. And then all of a sudden I, I go up with my, uh, with my trunk bars and they, they, don't, they don't connect and now everything's in the way. I, I'm always very careful about how I set things up. But then it was time to weld the tree rings. I started with a couple tacks, but then what, something I like to do is I take these just big chunks of, they're each, each are about like 60 to 70 pounds, just big drops of iron. Set those things down and pretty much it's like a one-sided clamp. I'm able to pull that, that plate down and all of these rings down nice and flush as I weld. Because 718 is an amazing thing. I can turn that piece of plate into like a taco shell with just, just the sheer heat that I'm creating. So now that we have the base down and the, 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 the hub for where the limbs attach to, it sure doesn't look like a tree, does it? But now is the time to where it's starting to take shape a little bit. When we start developing the curves of the trunk, you know, the way it grew, the way it stopped and grew slowly and then sometimes where it grew faster. I'm gonna try and give you a challenge and look at how trees grow. Go outside and look at trees. You see struggle. You see years and years of experiences Maybe one limb got lost and then it stopped putting material at this spot and then it started growing elsewhere. It's fascinating how things grow and to create growth in steel. It's awesome stuff. This is just only the beginning. I cannot wait because we're gonna start building out that trunk, you know, creating the knot that's gonna have a lot of the donors uh, for this big project right smack in your face. It's gonna be amazing. And then the limbs and the canopy. I cannot wait to sit in the shade of this tree. It's gonna be amazing, and I hope you join me for the entire journey. And as always, my friends, thank you for watching.